So in the video, they welded the two wires together using the pulse arc technology. So the previous video was using an MI cable. So the, uh, the cable was actually, the thermocouple was built inside of the cable. Um, this is uh, the next step after that is welded. We can then go through um, and hermetically seal uh, that same area. And you can see here, done with and without filler, well, uh, filler material. Uh, these were both done on the uh, laser welder, the LZR100. So I have a question for you. This is a type K uh, thermocouple. Um, as you can see, we ha we're very close up, okay? So that's, that's my pinky right there, all right? So you can see these wires are tiny. But like I said, I can hold my fingers really close. Even though I'm welding on this electrode, I can hold my fingers really close, and I'm not going to feel a burn or anything like that. Um, I can hold it steady, it's quick, it's fast. Um, you know, if you have to do lots of thermocouples, it goes by, you can get them done really, really quickly. So, let's cut to the screen and see what uh, our power is at. So this is again, it's called the M-Pulse, and we're using the M-Pulse Plus so that I can use a microscope. Um, we have a system, just the traditional M-Pulse, where uh, they don't have a microscope, but We'll show you that in just a second. Now this machine, I can go up to 30 watt seconds or all the way down to 3. And I did some tests earlier before the video and we found that 5 watt seconds is a good power setting uh, to be able to do these welds. So let's cut back to the welding camera. And you have to ground one of the thermocouple wires like this. And that's connected to the the impulse and then what we're going to do is uh, let's see here I gotta reposition this so that we can make sure the camera sees everything well okay so I switched cables but that's fine as long as one of them is grounded and I don't think I'm blocking am I blocking thing? No, nope, we can see alright here we go so you hold the two cables together and then just touch that electrode right on top. And I'm not holding them together very well, I'm sorry. Let me start over, here we go. So just to kind of get a better weld, I'm going to just touch one on top. And here we go. Turn my power up just a little bit. Well, hold on, I'm a little shaky. There we go, okay. I had to reposition my chair so I could get in a good spot here and clean those cables up. Okay, so I'm holding them close together touch right on top and I need more power this is a good example <laughs> alright let me try one more here Power a little too high there. Let me clean this electrode up. There we go. There we go. All right, that was embarrassing. Seriously, I gotta learn how to weld. Okay, so you can see right here on the video, you have those two cables. They're now welded together. And then what we do, we're gonna turn the power up just a little bit. 
and just for the sake of this video, we just have some stainless steel here that we're going to attach it to. And you can do this to any type of metal. So you have your thermocouple. So your finger's in the way. Oh, my finger in the way. Sorry about that. So it's kind of hard here to make sure I stay on the on their camera. There we go. Get the right power. Today we specifically chose the impulse. Um, it is our most simple unit, and uh, it it does also have a few features that uh, the other machines have features that would be more beneficial. What are some of those features, then? So um, on this one particularly, we could change to a standard ignition. And in the previous videos, we've talked about changing that over. This one does not have that option. So one of the problems that it's having is that the arc is tending to jump to one side or the other. So there we have our thermocouple attached. And I could probably put a couple welds around it as I'm looking through the microscope. But for the sake of the video, we can see that there. Yeah. All right. Now, so some other ones you can leave that camera on there thing. So here you have some bigger. These wires are a little bit bigger than the last demonstration I showed. So what we would do is we would actually just turn the power up a bit more. So I'm going to go to the 10 watt second range, and you can see with a little bit more power. We can just go like that, and you get a good weld. A little bit easier with the bigger ones, I feel like. And then same thing, grab your substrate, and I'm going to turn the power up a little bit more. And then after a couple welds, do a little pull test. You can see that's really strong. Trying to pull that off. So you have a good good solid weld there, and that could be uh, how you attach your thermocouple. So those were type examples of type K. Um, here's an example of type T. Now as you can see with the type T, uh, you have a bunch of wires, uh, stranded wire. So there's a couple different things you can do. What I like to do is just ball the top. So I'm going to take my power back to 10 watt seconds and kind of make a ball here so that we can easily fasten that together. So I did the one side. Now I'm going to turn my power up because I see that I could do it in one shot rather than a whole bunch if we do a little bit more power like that. So that's a really good example there. Now, we can just put the two together. And again, we have some bigger, uh, at the end of those wires there's a bigger ball, so what we're gonna do is turn the power up a little bit so we can put that together in just one shot. And there we have it. So there you see that that's together. And then again, you could just easily weld that to your substrate. So that's a type T. And the other two were type K. And as you can see, it's done really easy. Again, like Thane said, this is our, our most simple machine. Um, 